All right, this is Justin Rohner from agriscaping.com. This is our agriscaping podcast for the week, and I've got a special guest with me here today. His name's Al Lumna. Say hello, Al. How you doing, Justin? I'm doing pretty good. Now, how did we how did we first connect? Was it just my my gal hunting you down on the internet? Yes, it was. Awesome. Now, I'm looking at your page right now. I'm actually going to do a little screen share that people will be able to see the screen and where I'm at right now. I'm at lumnaacres.com, the modern steader blog, and uh, just want you to just share with us a little bit of what you've what you've got here, kind of where this came from for you, like how you got started into this space, because I, I think the story needs to be heard. I, I've got some similar stories in my family's life and stuff that I think will align really well, and I think people need to hear the kind of message that you're, the, the where you're coming from and where you're going, I guess is what I'll come okay. down to. Yeah, my big thing is I grew up always battling with anxiety, even as a little kid. When I was, I think, a senior in high school, I got it really bad, got put on anxiety medication, and me and the anxiety medication didn't jive well with each other so I stopped taking it after a while that's more to that story but we won't get into that <laughs> um, I started smoking and that was my chill pill ah. and then I, I quit smoking and I was I, I was a wreck um, we me and my wife had just gotten married and I told myself I was gonna quit smoking before I ever had kids because I didn't want my kids smoking also so I quit smoking I mean, my anxiety went through the roof. One of my bosses from work said, hey, you need to go talk to somebody. Something's wrong with you. So I went and, went and talked to a psychiatrist, and he told me, after talking for a little bit, he's like, you know, smoking's your chill pill. You can either start smoking again or take anxiety medication. And I said, I'm not taking anxiety medication. I've had problems with that in the past, and I'm quitting smoking. I don't want to... I don't want to smoke anymore. He's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. So that just made me dive deeper into it. And then I started, Food Inc. Was, came out about around that time. Mm -hmm. And everybody was learning more and more about their food. So I really started diving deeper into that aspect of it. And then I found that through what I ate made, made a huge difference in how I felt both mentally and physically. I used to be a junk food junkie. So once I started cutting out the junk food and different oils and stuff, I started feeling better. But then I also found out our food and how it's grown matters even more. So that's when we started having our own garden, raising our own chickens, raising pigs and turkeys. And then from there, it's just taken off and snowballed. And so my passion now is homesteading, but it's not homesteading to have a garden and stuff for us the end aspect is the food so our our focus on our channel is growing the best food possible for our family so we can have the best food quality and then we can have a better life because we feel better and we feel healthier so tell me a little bit more and about so the just, size of your property I, I think it'd be good for listeners and stuff to know just kind of what's uh yeah what what size area are you working with i mean you're talking pigs and turkeys and chickens and what all you got there well, right now we have eight and a half acres. Oh, um, nice. we only we only use maybe three. Mm -hmm. But this is the, this is the biggest property we have. When we first started, we were on probably about an acre of land with pigs and turkeys and chickens and a big garden. So it more comes down to how you set up your property. I wouldn't limit yourself on what you can do if you only have small acreage. You can still do quite a bit. Yeah, that's where we do a lot. A lot of the small acreage farming and stuff. We call it square foot farming. You know, mm -hmm. and that's where that's where we do a lot of stuff at agriscaping. It's just a lot of the really tiny spaces. I'm out here actually at one of our restaurants in uh, Scottsdale at Bagels and Bialis, and we've got a little 3,000 square foot garden. But that that little garden is packed full of food, and it actually serves right now two restaurants, Bitters Bar and uh, and the Bagels and Bialis, and then there's a whole nother. Um, Two more restaurants coming in so we we know that you can grow a lot in a little space yeah it's amazing how much you can do if you just focus your attention on that one area and don't don't let people hold you back by saying oh you don't got the land if you can just right. do it and take control over it, you can get a lot of stuff from a little area absolutely right i was on tv this morning teaching people how to do a salsa garden on their patio and so you know awesome. it doesn't take much but uh, no i think it i think it's a easier on small acreage or a small square foot because you don't have so much 
land to manage and control. You have just a small area to tend to, so you don't get as overwhelmed. Yeah, I know at my grandpa's old farm, we had, uh, you know, having, having big equipment was necessary to deal with all the weeds. It's like I, we probably spent a third of our time dealing with weed stuff. You know, I believe it. Oh, yeah. It's like, wow. But then on my, my own little yard, it's like, eh, we spend maybe a tenth of the time on weed stuff. So it's right. a lot less time having to deal with that because it's so densely populated with all the food. Yep. Well, you cool stuff. more I'm, time I'm, on them. That's right. That's right. More time on the business rather than just in the business, right? Right. Definitely. Now I'm just scrolling through seeing some of your pigs here on your on your blog and stuff on luminators.com. Yep. Got some pretty pigs. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> and it looks like you got the oh yard bird chicken plucker. Yeah, we had a yard bird chicken plucker that we gave away a, about two months ago when we hit twenty thousand subscribers on the YouTube channel. Well, that's awesome. Fun that yeah. you do little giveaways and stuff like that. So tell, um, I. I mean, you kind of sped through your your backstory a little bit on the uh, on the anxiety side of stuff and the meds. I mean, it's um, it seems like everybody's finding something, some some medication they end up on. And it sounds like you know, cigarettes were kind of your medication too, right? Oh yeah, cigarettes was was my chill pill. That was your chill pill. Of doing oh yeah, yeah. And so, so I wanted to go ahead. No, you go for it. What were you going to ask? Well, I was going to ask you just uh, about that. I guess, are you are you off cigarettes now? I didn't catch that. I mean, or is that still your chill pill? I mean, I, I'm curious. No, I, I quit, and it's been probably been 13 or 14 years that I haven't smoked for now. Awesome. Congratulations. So I, why, thank you. It was one of those things I told myself when I, I was going to quit, and I, I never went back, So, which was – awesome it was a scary thing to do at the time but oh yeah one of the best things i've done for myself and my family yeah it was an interesting thing I, when i was in i lived in germany for a few years did a lot of service and stuff and one of the service things i did while i was there uh, in my late teens was um, worked with uh, rehab centers and uh, smoking was probably the, the toughest one i mean it was a little, even tougher than alcohol and some of the other harder drugs it seemed like it, the the smokers had the hardest time with it um, and I, I wonder if, if it was the, you know, it was their chill pill. There was so many other things aligned with that for them. It was, it was a tough one to crack. Yeah. The biggest thing I found was, is it felt like it, it numbed the body, mm. which I didn't realize, but it numbs a lot of your sensation. And so you, and a lot of people, they don't, they can't taste their food as well when yeah. you're smoking. So I had anxiety at first when I quit just from quitting. And then when I got over that, like a month later, my anxiety was even worse off because my feelings started coming back. And I guess it's your, your blood flow starts flowing through your body more. So you can start feeling things that you never felt before. <laughs> and it's just like you're, you're super sensitive or I was at that point. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wow, what's this feeling? Or what, you know, what's that feeling or kind of stuff? And it, and it made the anxiety even worse. Wow. And it was my brother just started quitting smoking. And he called me up, and he was a nervous wreck, and he was talking about that stuff. And it was nice that I went through it because I could relate. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, this is what's going on. He's like, nobody has been able to tell me that before. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I don't have, like, medical terminology for it. I said, but I went through the same thing. I said, I don't know why or if it's just blood throw co flow coming back or what, but you start getting more heightened senses and feeling different things that you didn't feel before. And I think smoking – kills your nerves on different issues so now you have superpowers it sounds like you got you know heightened senses right <laughs> so now now you're more fussy about what food you eat because you can taste it more well and that can be a really good thing especially if you like good food that's right and the you more know? the more food you grow of your own or raise you respect it more and you want to get into more of the culinary aspect and what you can do with your food and how you can flavor it and how you can prepare it better. So what was the first food that you remember eating after you, you know, you, you started getting off smoking that you're like, wow, I didn't know that that was that good, that this is, you know, what was the most surprising thing you got to eat? I would say the most surprising thing I ate was farm fresh when we raised our first chickens. Oh, 
to your farm-raised chickens compared to your other chicken that you were eating before, what was the difference for you? Um, texture was huge. They're more, they're not like mushy, like a store-bought chicken, and they just have so much more flavor. Oh, yeah. You know, and the fat's yellow or fat. It's not, not the pale fat like that you see in the grocery store. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yep. So I've got a lot of background noise here, but I guess that's what you get when you're in a in a restaurant. Can you still hear me? All right, I'm just checking in. I can. Yep. No, but I can hear you good. Great, because I just have to turn up the volume for me, so I can hear you a little bit better. Hopefully, everybody else is listening in. You know, pump up the volume a little bit, because I think you know where we're going with this in this conversation. I think um, is good to hear, because everybody's got someone in their life that's probably gone through anxiety. I know I, I've got a my my in-laws now live with us. We built a little apartment for them in our house. And she's got a long history of anxiety. And um, we know that a diet has something to do with it. And the way I really know myself on, on how that's true is that since they moved in, we've had them actually sharing in the meal prep and stuff. And um, just yesterday, I, I literally w was so anxious. I never felt so anxious before. And I was like, what have I been eating? Something's different. And so I started yep. talking to my wife and finding out it's like a, a lot of what my, my mother-in-law makes and how she preps things was a big difference. And because I, I noticed there was a difference in the food. It seemed heavier. It seemed just uh, just a little bit more processed. I mean, there's a lot of things aligned with it. Maybe you can give me some insight as to what I need to be looking out for when it comes to the things that it heighten the anxiety and the things that really help taper that off and kind of help people heal. Our biggest thing that we noticed, that we... We go out to eat every once in a while. We don't mm -hmm. like to, but we do. Um, and if we go out to eat, if we have fried food, um, we notice it a lot. So I think a lot of it is the oils. And I won't, you won't notice it right away, but like the next morning I'll wake up and I'll be agitated and I'll just be mad at myself. And I'm like, <laughs> why am I in this horrible mood? I don't understand. And then I go, that's right. We went out to dinner last night or we went over to somebody's house and it's like, yep. You know, I think back and I find a lot of it boils down to if it's fried food and the different oils that they cook and prepare with. Um, we use a lot of lard in our house mm -hmm. when we can. And the other oil that we use is avocado oil. Avocado oil. It's expensive. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a little tougher one to find. Um, we find it on Amazon. All right. You can, you can get it by a gallon jug. It's expe it's I think it's like forty five bucks for the gallon jug, but when you break it down to ounces, it's it's fairly inexpensive that way. It's just the big, big one to swallow at first, but it'll last you quite a while. Well, yeah, if you get a gallon of it, that should last quite a long while. Yeah, and if we are, you're baking or if you're making salad dressings, you can use the avocado oil for anything, and it, it doesn't have a flavor like an olive oil. You know, you can have you have that the olive oil flavor. We don't find that with the avocado oil, so you can use it in anything. Now, I know with some of those oils, so is, is it a light oil or is it a pretty heavy oil? I mean, just thick-wise and thickness. What's the viscosity? You know, let's get into <laughs> some of those terms. I would say the avocado oil is about as, it's a little bit thinner than olive oil. All right. All right. And yeah. uh, what's its heat tolerance? I mean, if you're cooking with it and stuff, I mean, how hot can you get it before it hits that smoke point? Because I know that's a, that's a big no-no with, with oils. It's a really high heat. I don't know exactly, but it's a very high heat tolerance. Well, that's good. You don't to have know. to worry about it going. Yeah. So can I pop popcorn worry with about it? Going we've made popcorn with it. Yep, it's really good. We, if we're not using uh, avocado oil, we'll use uh, coconut oil to pop our popcorn with. Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Okay, so it's I'm, I'm seeing a smoke point about 450. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. That's right up there. That's right up there. That's good. Yeah, that's important. My kids love popcorn. We've grown a lot of our own popcorn, even in our own little backyard. And uh, oh, that's awesome. It's uh, it's it's fun. And so yep. the kids really love. It. We'll get different types of popcorn, like strawberry popcorn and black popcorns or blue popcorns. I mean, there's so many different varieties of popcorn than what that have different flavors. I mean, it, a, a popcorn can have a flavor all on its own. If you if you don't know, you got to try out some of the other gourmet popcorns out there. Just try them out. You'll, yeah, you'll well, I'll have to. Surprises. What do you use? What do you use to pop the popcorn with? So we just got a little uh, a little. Uh, it's a pan with a little turner. I can't remember what. It's like a whirly pop, and so use. Yeah, you got one. 
yeah, it's just a tiny bit of oil down in the base of that thing, and we just we just crank them around. And, awesome. Uh, they work really I've well. heard of them. We've, we've never had one before, but I might have to look into investing in one of them. Yeah, there you go. It is an investment, that's for sure. Yeah, but I'd, if I was you, I'd be seeing what your mother-in-law cooks with for oils, if she uses, like, vegetable oil or and if think, you can find a difference if you switch to a different... She's a big fan of butter. I mean, just just butter. And she uses a lot of butter. And I don't know if that's it or what. I, I know it's that like could butter. be it. Butter and you salt. Those have, are our two favorite ingredients. Salt. <laughs> Do you guys have Kerrygold butter? Or can you get Kerrygold butter? What's that? I don't even know what that is. It's the brand name of butter. It's, How do you spell uh, it? K-E-R-R-Y-G-O-L-D. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Let's see what see what we got. Oh, Kerry. It's Kerry. Yeah. Kerrig. Yep. So it's a K E R R Y. K E R R Y. All right. I'm a creative yeah, speller, yeah. so sometimes it's a little tough for me. All right. I'm gonna let's see. I'm I'm pulling it up. Grass fed cows. I like it. Yeah, from Ireland. From Ireland, of all places. From Ireland. Um, if you. If any of the listeners have never tried it, try cooking with Kerrygold butter. It, it's a world of difference of what the butter quality can do in your baked goods or anything. All right. I'm going to be looking for it. Yep. I see right there it says imported. Yep. We'll, we'll try that out. I mean, because I know that when you got good quality stuff, it's worth that little extra cost because you don't need as much of it. That was one of the number one things I found is you don't need as much of the good stuff. Definitely. It's like when you get a good grown kale, when you get a good a good grown carrot, you really just don't need as much of it. I mean, we found as a volume, you know, volume eaters, me and my, you know, my four kids, my, my me and my wife, my four kids, two, you know, two, two grandparents now in the, in the home, you know, we've got, uh, we've got eight people and our volume actually decreases when we're eating healthier, even though we're oh, all yeah. full, we're all happy, we're all, uh, you know, good, but volume of, of produce actually decreases. Right, because you have the more of the nutrients in the food that your body's craving. Yeah, like my body, the body says, "Hey, we're good. You know, don't need yep. to add anymore. We're good." Right, and then we found, you know, for like for meat, if we have good quality pasture raised meats, we raise our own pigs and our own chickens, so we're able to have it here. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's expensive." It is, but like for us with a pasture raised chicken, we'll get three to four meals out of it we'll get the first dinner and then we'll save the carcass and we'll make a bone broth out of it mm -hmm. and then we'll have leftovers and then we'll have we'll be able to make a soup or a stew also so we can get three meals from one bird awesome and so what's your family size how many kids you got what are you what are you guys working on <clears throat> there's three of us there's me my wife and our eight -year -old. oh fun yeah. So that one eight-year-old, he's got what, one year per acre. Is that what he's? That, that's what they got. You guys got there. <clears throat> yeah, we got one one per acre with her, right? <laughs> right. That's some fun work. And so you guys run the whole property yourself, or you got some help? Nope, it's just us right now. We'd like to get help later on, but we're growing the business right now. So trying to keep the overhead and all the costs down at this point as we grow. That's the way to do it. That's uh, I know me and my own family. We're starting to bring. We're when summer hits, we we kind of get bring the kids back in, and the kids take over some of the projects a lot of our other our other uh, crews are doing, and so we can send yep. the crews out on some other bigger projects. So our crews will work on expansion while my family can work on maintenance. Right, and, that works. Uh, and that's what we're doing this summer. We're looking forward to expanding the business through the summer, while with the kids working the maintenance on on different parts, and it's just kind of how it's rolling. Awesome. All right, so we've talked a little bit about the stuff to avoid. A couple of but, you know, that one butter to kind of that you would recommend. What are some other things that you would recommend that kind of help bring the anxiety down for people? Just some other is there veg? I mean, you got the the farm raised meats that you got there. Obviously, that's a good good route. What are some other things that people can be eating that really help support decreasing anxiety? And what's the opposite of anxiety anyway? I always get kind of stuck with that one. So, believe it or not, anxiety and adrenaline are the same thing. Really? It, it's just how your body perceives it. Oh. So, so it's if just you think a misuse of adrenaline? Is that what it is? 
anxiety, Correct. the misuse of adrenaline. If, if they were into sports a little bit more, maybe my, I'd get my, my, uh, my mother-in-law into playing basketball with me in the morning. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that would help. Or, you know, if, when you get all worked up, if you tell yourself, hey, I'm excited. I'm not nervous. Ah. I'm, I'm excited because it's the same thing. It's just you, your body. So, like, if you were in a car accident and you got all hyped up, you would know, okay, hey, I was in a car accident. This is why I feel this way. But if you start to have an anxiety attack for some reason and there's no reason for it, you start getting even more worked up because there's nothing – your brain's going, hey, there's nothing nothing like right in front of me to fear. So there's got to yeah. be something worse. What else am I looking for? And it just keeps spiraling. I got it. So your brain gets really creative in finding justification for its feelings when it can't find it apparent. Correct. Ah. Like, uh, it's like I know my one of my good friends, Steve Chandler, he's a best-selling author and stuff. He he uh, he would always tell me. He says, you know, worry is just a misuse of the imagination. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's it's a sign of a creative mind. So be grateful if you worry, because you're not at a loss for creativity. Yep. Because when you're worrying, think about all the stuff you're thinking about, and all this, you're making up so much stuff in your head that could happen. So if you can switch that into something creative, you you'd be pretty well off. <laughs> yeah, my brother would say, it's like, you don't want to get a degree from MSU. And I said, well, where's that? And he says, well, it's making stuff up. Right. So you don't want a degree in that, you know, because no matter who you try to convince, you you know, that, that it's there, it's it's just not reality. And so, yeah, you, it's, uh, but that's what our creative minds can do. So, you know, a blessings to all of you with those creative minds. Let, let's just put them to new use, right? That's right. We just got to think about better things. Instead of all negative thoughts, think of creative ways we can be using that energy. That's right. Yep. So, what more food-wise? What do we? What can we do food-wise? That's a great thought thought construct. Just, just, just knowing that or remembering that, it's like what well, we just talked about. It. You can put that on your wall. It's kind of just uh, what to do. It's like is that anxiety is adrenaline, and it's just a yep. matter of what you're applying it to. It's like, well, I'm not, I'm not anxious. I'm excited. Right. And then, you know, like, like a lot of people are getting up to do public speaking, they're nervous, they have butterflies. Yeah. You know, when you're getting up to do that, you just tell yourself, hey, no, I'm not nervous, I'm excited, and it's just energy running through me because I'm excited right now. You'll look at it differently. In the same way with anxiety. Yeah, I remember before I went on a big a big uh, TV televised thing, it's like I literally was in the bathroom throwing up. I was so I was so nervous about it. But then I go, I, and then I came out of there, and the guy's like, are you okay? Are you going to be able to go on? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. He's like, this is going to be great. He's like, why is it going to be great? I was like, well, I just threw up, so I'm, I'm here. I'm totally here. Right. I'm, I'm in it. I'm totally I'm good now. Yeah, I'm good now. It's like, oh, that, that's over. And, and I know <laughs> right. that my, my body, everything about me wants to have a good time with this. And that's what I told myself because yeah. I, mean, I wasn't sure either. I needed to convince him and myself in that moment, and it sounded good when it came out of my mouth. So I'm like, I better, I better remember that. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. here. I'm excited. You know, I'm so excited. I, my whole body's in it. That's right. I like that one. But yeah, for me, food-wise, it's paying attention to good quality ingredients. And for me personally and for our family, we've noticed that it's the oils in the food that makes the biggest difference. Well, that's nice to know. I mean, it's um, I guess we probably just don't realize what those fats, because those fats can be really good for your brain, but then there's other fats that can be pretty bad for your brain, basically what we're saying. Right, well, if it, right, if, as long as it's good quality fat, it's good for you. The brain is made up, I can't, can't remember exactly, but it's either 80 or 90% of fat. Wow. So our body need, needs fat to live. Got to keep feeding it so it works right. We've got to keep synapses it. right. Yep. That's a wonderful machine, the brain. You know, it's, 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 uh, you give it... You give it, you give it a, a, a stimulus, you give it a feeling, you give it some kind of stimulus, and it searches to find justification for it. It just, it'll work its, work its end until you direct it somewhere. It kind of just runs amok until you tell it where to go. Right. You've got to always be putting in good things, whether it's thoughts or food, into your body, so you're, you're making sure you're going in the right direction. Yeah. It's like I've, I've got a bumper sticker that I got. I found it in California in, in a... In Santa Monica, of all places, you know, it was kind of in, the, in that area. And it, it said, you don't have to believe everything you think. That is true. And the first time I read that, I was like, oh, wait. 
but but I just thought it, so I have to believe it. It's, it came from me. I need to, I need to give it validation. You know, I have to validate this thought I have. And I was like, no, I really don't. I can just let it go like a cloud in the sky. Right. You know, they, they yep. cloud, just dark clouds come and they they can go. They don't have to stay yeah. and, unless I, you know, lasso it up and tie it to the ground and put a lot of other justification around it. Most thoughts, they can just go. Yeah, definitely. We can just like be the observer. Your creativity. Yeah. yeah, it's your creativity. So just let it go. You don't want to focus on it. Move on to the next thing. That's right. And that just reminds me of the Frozen song my daughter was singing the other day. But uh, <laughs> let it go. Yep. Well, that's a good money. Good, uh, good movie. Good example of what happens if you keep a belief too long. That might not be serving you. you know? Oh, definitely. It's. Uh, yep. This is good stuff. I mean, this is good content just for anybody in, in terms of just mental health and how it rolls into your, your physical health and how it rolls into also just your your uh, nutrition. I mean, the things yeah. that were, they're all interconnected. Because I know myself, if, if I get anxious or if I get, you know, over-anxious on different things, it's like I'm I'm more prone to eat stupid stuff. You know, it's like all of a sudden it's like I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm craving the stuff that I wanted when I was a little kid to, to find comfort, you know, in my gummy bears and the... And, you know, gummy worms and stuff like that, which I know for me now, that would be absolutely bad. Every allergy I'd have would start coming back. Right. Yep. But like you said, though, if you start getting in that that state for some reason, your body starts craving the sweet and the salty and the oils. And yeah, then it, it just snowballs it. Those just add on top of how you're already failing. And it just keeps going and it gets into a vicious cycle. Yeah, there was a little... Uh, you ever seen the little video? It's it's a YouTube video. It's been out for a while, millions and millions of views. It, it, it's the way to search it is the addicted duck. I think is what it is. I think it was called Nuggets. Have you ever seen that little clip, that little video? No, I haven't. It's uh it's quite an interesting little thing. It kind of goes through just the process of of what people go through when they when they get a fix on something, you know, some type of substance. But it's it's all just. A little animated short and you can just kind of walk them through the process and watch how negative loop cycles progress yep and I had my kids all watch it and my little daughter she's eight she's seven almost eight she uh, you know as it was going towards the end it's about a three-minute video but towards the end she's like don't do it she's like yelling out don't do it don't take oh, it again but at the beginning she was laughing oh that looks cool what's it drinking you know I, I want some of that that looks fun but at the end don't do it stop I just pulled it up. I'll have to watch it after. It's, up. it's got like 13 and a half million video views. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, a, a great little great little clip. I mean, if you want to teach kids what addiction is, it's a great little one to kind of show them what that is. But addiction goes with so many other things. It's not just about the, the traditionals, you know, the, the hard drugs and smoking and alcohol and things. It's, it's just about anything that's not supporting you in your life. Yeah. If, if it's a bad habit and you're always doing it, then... That's an addiction. Yeah. If, if, if it's giving you a fix and then at the end of the day you end up crashing harder and feel like you need it more, you run into it or whatever it is for you, it's like that's an addiction. That's something that it's circumventing your own conscious choice. And oh, yeah. You know, just rid that stuff out of your world. It's just, you know, be in control. You're a human. Yep. Speaking of that, I just think when you're bringing up the duck guy, it made me think of when I was a kid. I'm curious if you ever saw the commercial, but when we were growing up, the commercial that was always out there was you are what you eat with the guy with the wagon wheel. Oh, keep talking. I don't know if I remember that one. Keep talking. You don't remember that one? Mm -hmm. So it was just out there. It was ran by the government. And it was just a commercial they always had out there talking about you are what you eat from your head down to your feet and basically your food matters. And I just think it's funny because nowadays you never hear anything like that on the on the TV or – you know, the government's kind of done like a whole 180 from that. Yeah, I was going to say that's not what I. Re that's not the. That's not the current narrative by any means. Right. Well, that's pretty funny. I, I just, just think pulled it's up funny. some of these YouTube videos and stuff. You are what you eat. Yeah, there was a cartoon version of it too. Is that the one you were thinking about? Yeah, that's what it was. It was a cartoon version. Yeah, that little yellow guy. Yep. Yep, I remember that one. It was oh, like a goodness. stick. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there he is. And they do ones on cheese, just all different things. They always had the videos on. Oh, that's a great meme. You see that one, the Cinnabons? Yep, there you go. That's cute. Yep. You are what you eat. Yeah, totally different message. So that was the government program back then, huh? 
back then that was I was I was born in the, in eighty one, so that was probably late eighties, early nineties is when they were promoting that. Wow. There you go. I love it. So we weren't crazy back then. We 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 yeah, okay. This is good. No. Nope. We're we're crazy now. We're crazy now. We're crazy now. We've been we've been marketed to. You know? That's, that's, uh, that's exactly what it is. And and they always want us hush you know rush into work you know i mean that's another interesting thing so this is another thing that i've noticed especially in the last couple months for myself it's it's all the fast food all the stuff that i i can get easy and fast becomes only necessary when i'm convinced that i just need to push my life i just got to keep pushing it i got to push it i got to push it i got to be hustling i got to be making things happen i got to be you know working all hours of the day and uh it's just not necessary not necessary no. <clears throat> hurry out no and that's the big one is if we're all if we're always running around trying to get to the next whether it's for work or the next event after work we're always in a rush and we don't have time to stop and eat a good meal or go into the drive throughs and get in McDonald's or KFC and that's the stuff that just has all that that's fried food so it's just not good for you it just makes you feel worse and worse and then you get more sluggish and more tired and more run down and it's just a vicious cycle exactly now, just looking at some of your videos that you have listed on here, it's like uh, I see little the little caption. It says, there is never enough time. Uh, uh, I guess there was a video on neglecting the homestead chores, and now we're paying the price. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that particular video because that kind of plays into what we're talking about here too. It's kind of like, oh, hey, we yeah. get out of whack. It's just, exactly. It kind of feels like no matter what you're doing, you can, like we were talking before, if it's not serving you, it can become an addiction. So if we're trying to always do something we can just keep filling our time with stuff that that we don't need to do we need to kind of step back and evaluate hey why am i doing this what what's the purpose indeed what is the purpose and that's that personal evaluation that self-reflection is a key component anybody that's out there farming or gardening and stuff it's good to have that reflection time and uh yeah. and really take you know pause for you know, station identification is a re, re, recirculate, you know, make sure that you got a, a better hold on why you're doing something. The why is a, a big important thing. And if the whys aren't matching up with the life you want, you know, re, reset. Yep, definitely. We, we did a year of this April 1st. It was a year of doing daily videos. So towards the end of that, uh, I found myself reflecting and throughout like six months through, like, why are we doing this? Why are we living the way we're living? And that's what I, it, called, it came from, like, we do, we do it for the food. Like, I'm not, our end goal is to have good quality food for our family so we feel better. You know, it's like, that's what we need to focus on. And everything else can revolve, not revolve around it, but everything else, if it doesn't fall in line with, with that, can take a back seat. That's right. And there's always something that can fill time. Oh, Yeah. You can do nothing and fill time, right? Yeah, if you sit around and do nothing, like, wow, I didn't get anything done today. Where'd yeah. it go? But there's also good to, to just have time for nothing. So Sometimes I actually have to schedule time for nothing just so I have a blank space so my mind can kind of just release all the pressure it's built up over the course of a day of busyness. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, scheduling a time for nothing. You know, when's the last time someone did yeah. that, right? Right. Nowadays, we don't talk about that kind of stuff. It's, yeah. You should always be busy. <laughs> like you're unproductive if you're not busy. Right. If you're not busy, you're unproductive. If you're tired, go have another cup of coffee and you'll be in good shape. <laughs> Just pump yourself back up again, right? Right. Yeesh. Yep. Well, this has been a good conversation. I, I appreciate the the narrative of your life and how it's unfolding and how people can even watch that online. I mean, you got some great YouTube videos up there and having that commitment to doing that on a regular basis, that's probably something I probably ought to do. And is, has that been a difficult process for you? What have you found has, has been great for you on that? And what's been tough? The tough part is getting yourself to upload the video. You're, <laughs> because you're re-watching yourself and you're editing yourself, so you're always in your head going, this isn't good enough, or is this good enough? Yeah. You know, so that's that's the hard part for me, anyways, of doing the videos. It's the self doubt, the self doubt. But if you push through that, I think I I get a lot out of the videos 
from feedback from the viewers and stuff. And I feel like I can sometimes get more out of it for personal growth and listening to other people. But I hope they get just as much out of it by watching the videos. You know, back in the day, people would do a lot of journaling. I guess this is probably a similar process for you. Is that about right? I mean, it's kind of like journaling. Yeah. You get to do some self-reflection. You get to watch yourself as you're trying right. to communicate something. And, That's uh, right. And kind of evaluate. And just kind of, it's like, hey, a little self-assessment here. You know, it's, it's been a huge personal growth that way by, by seeing yourself and then seeing how other people perceive you or, or your message kind of thing. So it's been a big, big personal growth for the last year which has been great. It's hard, but it's good at the same time. Well, what I'm finding, and I think everything you're talking about, it's about routines. You know, it's like the routines of the garden. It's the routines of the farm and the, and the upkeep on the farm. It's the routines of, of making those videos and publishing those videos, bringing things to completion. It's like anytime we have routines in our life that can that are processing something and then can bring something to completion. I mean, for my kids and their piano, it's they practice so they can perform. And I think just that, that routines of doing stuff in your own garden. You're practicing something so you can harvest it. You know, with the videos, you're, you're practicing something. You're editing something so that you can post it. You know, you're, you're making routines of things that have a completion and some way of, you know, expressing that completion or partaking of that completion. Or, you know, that, that's good, positive, just life, you know, life habits. You know, it, it builds people, builds character, as they say. But what it really does is it builds a, a depth of understanding, I think, of so many different subjects just by going through something like that. Oh, definitely. And it's nice, like you were talking about, that it's a journal. I, I can look back and reflect on where we've come or what we've gone through in the last year, two years, just looking back. <clears throat> so it's, it's nice to see, oh, yeah, hey, we did this, or last year it was this way, and look how much we've grown. So... It's like you said. I've never journaled before, so this has been a perfect journal for me. <laughs> there you so go. Can look back and see. This is the modern was, journaling process, right? Yep. And that was one of the reasons we started the channel from the very beginning, as we moved to the new property in 2015. We we're like, all right, this is a way to document it, so we can look back and see how we've changed it and how it's changed over the years. That's a great way to look at it, and, and so it can be healthy. I mean. Now, some of the concerns people have in doing stuff and posting stuff like that kind of thing is um, is all those trolls out there. Now, is that really a big issue for people, or is that is that something you've experienced? And how do you deal with that kind of stuff? Just working in this social media world, we experience it. I just I just laugh. You <laughs> kind of have to laugh it off. Some days it gets to you more than others. Um, I like to look at it sometimes and just laugh, and then just think about. Why is this person saying that? Like, they, they must not be in a good spot in their life. So, yeah, so you kind of feel bad for them on one end. Yeah, it's, I've seen a number of those, especially with a lot of the the garden clubs in our area. There's the bigger they get, it seems like there's more trolls present, and they'll just ream people for their methods, and they'll ream people for for you know having a dog that doesn't eat all veg. Or, I mean, it's just weird little things. They're just like, wow, where are people coming from to have to attack? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. We'll put out videos. Um, we did a pasture to plate whole hog workshop mm -hmm. uh, two weeks ago. We harvested our pigs that we raised here for food. We had uh, Doug and Andy from Hand Hewn Farm in Ohio out here teaching us, and we'll share the videos. We don't nothing gruesome on the on the videos, but we share it, and it's more just like culinary. It's more food prep at that point. Yeah, and the comments you get about it, it's. I mean, it, people don't realize where their food comes from, so it's kind of sad. Yeah. You Thank know, it's like, sure. so, right, it's like, I'm glad the videos are out there, but then you can get some really bad negative feedback from people. It's just like, what do you eat? Like, yeah. how is your food raised? Yes, I understand we raised these pigs in our backyard. They were part of our daily life for six months, but that <laughs> makes us respect the food more. Yes. I'm going to care more about what I do with all the food. We're going to save the bones and make bone broth with it. We're not just going to throw it away at the end. But Yeah, for us, we kind of talk about it with my kids. It's food integrity. It's like we want them to know where all their food comes from so they really understand it. And, and they really understand that something had to die in order for them to eat that Chick-fil-A sandwich. You know, it's like... <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Right, that Chick-fil-A sandwich was a chicken. It wasn't yeah. just a... 
piece of meat that came out of thin air. Yeah, they didn't they grow. Know. They didn't grow meat. You know, it wasn't, right. wasn't this. Uh, yeah, that was a. The, yeah, and and we have chickens, and so they they get it. They're like, well, you like Mavis? And it's like, yeah, your favorite chicken, Mavis. This might have been someone's favorite chicken, Mavis. And at first, you right. know, they're like, you know, some of my neighbors thought I was being cruel to my kid for saying that. I was like, no, wait a minute, just just hear this out, you know. And then the conversation pans out. So where my daughter really recognizes, like, well, then someone really put a lot of love into this chicken. I was like, now you're talking. See. All that yeah. love, all that effort, all that, you know, all that was put into that. Now you get to partake of it and make that part of your life. All that energy isn't lost with you. Right. You know, but see, think yep. what would happen if Mavis, if Mavis died, or, you know, our favorite chicken, if Mavis dies, and, and it just dies on its own, we can't process it and eat it. You know, and, and, right. and in many cases, we have to put it in a bag and throw it away, and then it goes to a landfill, and then it just rots in a landfill, not able to nutri you know, add nutrients to anything. <sighs> And yep. uh, it's like, well, where did all the love and energy go there? It's like, well, it's gone. It's lost. Right. Yeah. Married. Definitely. You know, and, it, and, a, and a, like we have our not, our daughter's nine. I said eight earlier. So if, yeah. she hears the, if she hears the podcast, I'll be in trouble. But our <laughs> nine-year-old our nine year old daughter, you know, she's aware of all that. And she understands that it takes life to have life. And it's more of a respectful balance, I think. I'm just waiting for the day. So, um, there's going to be a new troll that's going to pop up somewhere. It's, there's going to be this whole new organization, you know, and it's going to be, it's going to be people against the, the cruelty to plants, and you know, there's going to be it's a new organization that's you know try to save the plants, you know, that people should not be, you know, they're going to be mad at how you harvest a plant. Oh, oh they will be someday. There will someday. be. I bet you. Yeah, exactly. It's a, I mean, it's we we already have tree huggers, and we love the tree huggers because they you know they help us protect. In the the sanctity of, of of a nature that I love to go and wander in, but at the same yep. time, it's like there's a balance in all these things, you know. Uh, you know, yeah. moderation in all things, and be you know, what are you for rather than what are you against? And let's focus right. on what we're for, and let's support each other, and let's collaborate, and let's align, you know, yep. rather than what I'm against and who who am I going to walk up and stand up against? Or you know, it's like oh, I don't know, different attitude, right? Yep. And then I think it's. I'm not picking on the vegans or the vegetarians, but we'll get the comments from them like, oh, you should just eat plants. You don't, you don't have to take any life. But there is life lost. Well, whether you're just gardening, if you're a big farmer or not, you're killing mice in the fields and worms and stuff like that. So it's like people don't see the connection between whether it's a plant or an animal. Some way or another, something had to die for us to have the food. That's right. Well, that reminds me of something one of my buddies told me, eat, or it was one of my, my nephew. My nephew told me this on Sundays. We had a dinner with my nephew and stuff, and he, and he goes, he's just kind of a comedian kind of guy. He's, he's hilarious, and so this is intended entirely to be funny for everybody out there. So if you're vegan or vegetarian or something like that, he says, hey, I don't get vegetarians. If they're trying to save animals, why are they eating their food? Right. I mean, they're out there. You're eating up all the animals' food, so you're you're only focusing on eating the foods that animals eat. It's like, oh, you need to share. You know, it's like kind of attitude. I was like, well, that's kind of funny. It's like, oh, and so it, it's it's just a different perspective. I mean, it's really to look at we're all, you know, all life on Earth is all connected. And oh yeah, you know, uh, it's really hard to grow soil without without animals that we would otherwise that we would eat you know without the manures without you know the breakdown of that stuff it's hard to build good soil content it's right and if you do build it without animal manure you're not going to build good content but you could grow it with petroleum-based fertilizers oh, and how is that any better for the environment yeah not a fan not a fan because then they just get addicted now we get plants with addictions right right now your plants are addicted and they're grown up on addictions and they don't have any nutrients for you because the soil didn't have nutrients and but they look beautiful and the bugs will die if they eat them you know those kind of things right that's right <laughs> yep. and then i get a kick out of the vegetarian the vegan food that tastes like bacon but it's not bacon oh or yeah jerky. it's like well you don't want to eat meat why do you want to eat food that tastes like meat yeah, it's it's comedy, but it's a good comedy. We we actually did a whole film on that with one of our restaurants here. So Bagels and Bialis, they actually made a recipe. It was um, it was egg eggplant bacon, and it was good. I liked it. I mean, I was like, yep. hey, there's a BLT. I could have a BLT with the eggplant bacon. It was it would have rocked. I mean, and we made it right here at the restaurant. And so it's it's neat. And 
and with the, I've got a lot of good vegan friends. The vegan athlete, he's been we've done videos together for years. Um, there's there's a lot of fun that we have together. We kind of nudge each other. But one thing's for certain: every time I get sick, when I if I shift my diet to a vegan diet, I usually get I get I get well quicker. And that's always been true for me. And that's not true for everybody, but it's been true for me. Like all my allergies, yep. usually I can fix those just by simply having that opportunity to, to, to eat more of a vegan diet. It worked really good for me. Wow. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. It's fun stuff. Well, it's been great having this conversation with you today. And um, Yeah, it's been a great conversation. For everybody out there, so Al at uh, LuminaAcres.com, you can check him out there. Find his videos. He's on YouTube. He's got a, quite a process. You can follow his history. Join his journal. It's not his diary. This is his journal. This is more for posterity. Right. It's not for the private people, right? <laughs> That's right. This is good stuff. Well, any other final thoughts or places where you want them to want them to go so that they can find you and find out more about you? I, I would say check out our website, lumnaacres.com, or type in Lumna Acres on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now, we upload five videos a week, so they can always follow along in our crazy journey with us. That's awesome. Well, well done, and I love the routines that you got yourself on. It's certainly building help for yourself, and others can follow along in that same journey. I love it. Thank you. Well, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for having us on, Justin. You're welcome. <laughs>